In the previous lecture, we mentioned an interesting difference between prophecy in the Bible and Mesopotamia. Biblical prophecies often focus on reproach and criticism, while the Mesopotamian prophecies which have reached us are peace prophecies. Avraham Malamat, one of the first students of Mari culture, believed this to be a significant difference. He writes, in contrast to the Bible with its prophecies of doom and words of admonition against king and people, the messages at Mari were usually optimistic and sought to placate the king rather than rebuke or alert him. Such prophecies of success and salvation, colored by a touch of nationalism, liken the Mari prophets to the false prophets of the Bible. Indeed, several biblical passages describe court prophets who proclaimed peace prophecies in an attempt to please the king. A typical example occurs in 1 Kings 22. This narrative tells of the court prophets of King Ahab who promise him victory over the Arameans. However, his partner, King Jehoshaphat, suspects the peace prophets. But Jehoshaphat said to the king of Israel, inquire first for the word of the Lord. So the king of Israel gathered the prophets, about 400 men, and said to them, Shall I march upon Ramot Gilad for battle, or shall I refrain? They said, March, for the Lord will give it into the hand of the king. But Jehoshaphat said, Is there no other prophet of the Lord here through whom we may inquire? The king of Israel said to Jehoshaphat, There is still one other through whom we may inquire of the Lord, Micaiah, son of Imla. But I hate him, for he never prophesies anything favorable about me, only misfortune. Jehoshaphat said, let the king not say such a thing. So the king of Israel summoned an officer and said, bring quickly Micaiah, son of Imla. The messenger who had gone to summon Micaiah said to him, look, the words of the prophets with one accord are favorable to the king. Let your word be like the word of one of them and speak favorably. But Micaiah said, As the Lord lives, whatever the Lord says to me, that I will speak. When he came before the king, the king said to him, Micaiah, shall we march upon remote Gilad for battle, or shall we refrain? He answered him, March and triumph. The Lord will give it into the hand of the king. But the king said to him, how many times must I make you swear to tell me nothing but the truth in the name of the Lord? Then he said, I saw all Israel scattered on the mountains like sheep that have no shepherd. It might be argued that Ahab represents here the prevalent ancient Near Eastern view of the relationship between king and prophet. The prophet must side with the king and encourage him before battle. The prophet who predicts a bad outcome antagonizes the king and arouses his hatred. Jehoshaphat, on the other hand, prefers the prophet to remain independent, thus allowing him to speak the truth. Malamat goes on to suggest additional examples. The prophets of peace served the establishment and expressed its interests. In contrast to Mari, the Bible is replete with prophecies unfavorable to king and country. Their heralds, the so-called prophets of doom, or true prophets, were constantly harassed by the authorities. One well-known case is that of Amos, who, at the royal sanctuary at Beth-El, foretold of King Jeroboam's death and the exile of the people. Amos 7, 10 to 13. In reaction, the priest Amatziah by order of the king, expelled the prophet Judah in disgrace. Jeremiah provoked an even more violent response in the days of both Jehoiakim and Zedekiah. When confronted by the prophet's words of wrath, Pashur, the priest in charge of the temple in Jerusalem, beat Jeremiah the prophet and put him in the stocks that were in the house of the Lord. Jeremiah 22. In the next lecture, we will discuss Malamat's ideas regarding the relation between these two traditions of prophecy 
and present other scholarly approaches in this regard.